Okay, our curtains have arrived. We have a Velcro top attachment. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the complete installation from box to finished product. So let's look inside here, see what we got. These are our fiber fiberglass rods. We've got our kit. We've got a curtain. So let's get started and I'm gonna show you the tools you're gonna need. Okay, let's talk about the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need scissors to cut the Velcro, easy enough. You need a staple gun to reinforce that Velcro every 12 inches so that it doesn't pull away. And then for these marine snaps, the male snaps on a screw stud, so you're gonna need a drill. That's it. Oh, you need a ladder. Um, let's, so let's see what came with your kit here. We have marine snaps for sealing the sides. This is the industrial snap tool, uh, fully refundable, $130 snap tool. Send this back when you're done, you get a 100% refund. And then uh, this is our Velcro. We have one little small panel, so we provided a little tie back for you, tie it back. And then this is, we have only one magnetic doorway, so we have our magnets, a little tool that we provide to put the magnets in and these fiberglass rods. Now, when you do uh, uncoil this thing, this thing is coiled under tension, so please be careful. This thing's a little bit spring-loaded. Just be careful of that. Um, and I love my curtains. Get in that box. See what you got. They're beautiful. This stuff is gorgeous. You're going to love it. So let's get started. Let's hang a curtain. Okay, this is Trang. She's uh, our new planner. She comes from the design community. And we have two panels. Now in your paperwork, you'll see panel diagrams on how they're labeled, but generally they're labeled in some sequential order. On the back of every curtain panel, there's a, on the back of the tag, there will be a indication of what panel number that is. So, you know, we only have two panels, but some, some projects have 10, 12 panels. So uh, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to put up our adhesive back Velcro and then we're going to reinforce it with a staple gun every 12 inches. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, when we start the Velcro, wrap around some surface, okay? So we're going to wrap around this little bitty corner right here and I'm just going to peel and stick. I'm going to come back over this later with a staple gun to reinforce it about every 12 inches or so. But for now, I'm just going to peel it stick. Now at this corner here, I'm going to cut it about three inches long. And I'm going to wrap around this corner. Start by wrapping around this corner overlapping this edge. Now on this one here, even though we had turned the corner here, I'm gonna let the Velcro continue on a ways. Because remember, Velcro is hard to pull away from the middle. It's easy. The adhesive would be easy, easier to pull away from the end. It's very difficult to pull away from the middle. So if I extend it a little bit, then I'm turning in at the middle of this Velcro. And now we got to figure out what to do here. We can't really turn the corner here because there's a downspout, but fortunately there's a gap right here between these uh, columns here. And remember, Velcro is side mounted to something. So rather than go on the underside of the ceiling, I have undermounted this wood strip here. And so we can just side mount to it. We can turn the corner. We have a continuous path right to our final seal portion. 
Now the type of wood that I really like to use is something, I think they call it Azac, but it's, in, it's a synthetic molding. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's made of a PVC composite. It's not wood at all. And uh, it, it's, it already comes white, so chances are you don't need to paint it. Um, it won't split, it won't rot, so it's really good stuff. So all I did was I took a wood strip here and I undermounted it to the ceiling so I, so I now have a side mounting surface. Okay, now we need marine snaps in the two upper corners of every panel. The reason for that is Velcro's a really good hold in the middle, but on the very ends, it tends to be a weak hold. So if we can put a marine snap in the two upper corners into the Velcro, then it won't have a chance to get started to pull away. So it is going to be a lot easier to put these on right here than it is up on a ladder. So the snap tool, I'm gonna to put the button in the bottom and I'm gonna put this little socket. It's gonna clip up here and it's just simply crunch. There's a little adjustment knob here. It goes right through the Velcro, right through the curtain. So there's one corner. Okay, that's ready. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare our magnetic doorway. It's a whole lot easier to do down here than it is when the curtain's hanging. What I've done is I've laid the curtains out on the floor here because we're gonna rig the magnetic doorways and it's a whole lot easier to do it on the floor than it is when the curtains are hanging. But I got a skinny panel, I got my large panel, they're in order. And incidentally, if you have multiple panels, uh, the panels are usually labeled sequentially and there's a diagram that comes with your order that will have a uh, panel diagram and uh, look on the back of the label and you'll see the panel number. So on this particular application, it's nine feet tall. I don't have very much wind, so I'm gonna use five magnets. So I wanna equally space these things. So I'm gonna put one near the top here, and I'm just using some of the kid's chalk. I'm gonna put one at the bottom. I'm gonna make it on the other panel. So to insert the, the magnets, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use what we call the ramrod method. So as I ramrod this down, I want kind of a rounded edge. So I'm gonna sort of round this edge a little bit like an eraser head. Okay, so be careful when this opens because it's just going to want to fly all over the place and you don't want to get hurt. And this is a 10 foot rod. These are my rounded edges. You use a lighter, I'm just going to sear that. It keeps it from splintering. The magnets, if you look here, you'll see double stitching. The magnets go between the double stitching. And we're gonna use the, ram, the fiberglass rod to ramrod those magnets into position. This outer channel here hold, eventually will hold the fiberglass rod itself, okay? So let's see how this thing works here. You ever seam ripper? What I wanna do is I wanna go between the double stitching without crossing over the double stitching. So I'm gonna make a little slit. I'm gonna come out before the stitch. Definitely don't wanna cross over it. It's a very sharp knife. We'll go right through it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my first magnet in, push it down to the chalk mark, and just keep doing that. Now for the first panel, it doesn't really matter 
how I put the magnets in. What matters is how I put the other side in because they need to attract each other and not repel each other. So these magnets are very, very, very powerful. Don't let them slam together. This rare earth uh, metal is very brittle. Once it gets into the, the, the binding, it becomes padded and we don't need to worry about it. But if you slam these together, they'll just crack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist off a magnet. I'm gonna put it in the little pocket that I created with the seam ripper between the double stitching. That's gonna go in. She's gonna pull on the other end. Give me a nice straight line. Just gonna ramrod this baby down. Remember, we're doing five total. Got it? Good. Easy to do. And we can put in as many magnets as we want, and it all depends upon our wind conditions. There's my pocket, goes in, fiberglass rod, ramrods that one into place. Okay, now when I'm finished putting my magnets in, I wanna clean up my little cut mark. So what I do is I just put my hand here, get the lighter, just wave it real quick, tap, 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 it's all sealed. Okay, my chalk marks wipe away. So let's lay this back down on the ground again. So like I say, we don't really care what the polarity is of the first set of magnets. We definitely care what the polarity is on the second set of magnets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a magnet on this. And you'll see how strong they are. You just have to get them close and they'll, they'll find the other magnet. There it is. She's got those. And they are laid correctly, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm just gonna mark the back of the magnet just enough so I can see it. All I have to do when placing these, magnet, when placing these magnets is that the Sharpie mark is on top and I put them down in the correct order, starting with the bottom magnet first and working my way up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my fiberglass rod, ramrod this thing down. First thing before I do anything, let me test and see my magnetic connection, that bottom magnetic connection. Make sure that that works correctly. Is that attracting or repelling? Attracting. Perfect. Okay, so I'm testing it. So I'm gonna put in the next one, Sharpie side up, because that's the way I'm doing this. I'm gonna take my fiberglass rod, ramrod that baby down. If I do put it in backwards and it does, and I get down there and I find it does repel, I can massage it and get that thing to flip, right? But let's put it in right the first time. Okay, so let's lay this down and test to make sure our work was good. And all these babies are attracting They're not repelling. They're all lined up. Great. Let's do the other side. Before I put this up, I want to file it. Get it round, not to a sharp point, like a dagger, but like a, a racer head. You get, try to get around it, right? That'll make it go in a lot easier. And also to prevent this from splintering. Okay. Melts the end. Okay. Fiberglass rod. Remember the magnets are between that double stitching. 
fiberglass rod goes outside the double stitching. There's a little channel right out here just outside the double stitching. If you look at the bottom of the curtain, there's a little bit of a hole. I'm just going to take this fiberglass rod and we're going to put it up into that hole. You can see the fabric is spiraling around that. It's okay, we'll just even it out. Now it's nice and straight. And for the last little bit, I'm gonna go over here and push against something hard. Hmm. So the fiberglass, this is a 10 foot fiberglass rod. It's a nine foot curtain. I want my fiberglass rod to be short. I want it to end right about here, about two inches up from the bottom of the curtain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back I'm going to take some cutters. And again, I want to file the end. Okay, hold the flame, blow right out. There's where it ends. Now over time, even though it's a tight fit in there, it can have a way of kind of working its way out and poking out the bottom. There's a number of things you can do. I like to use an ordinary stapler. Just staple the bottom of that channel. What I like about the staple is I can always undo these, I can always get these staples out so that when it comes time to take the curtain down, I can still get that fiberglass rod out. So I'm gonna put my marine snap right through the Velcro. Good. Okay, I'm snapped into place. I'm gonna worry about this side later. Okay, we're gonna do this at the very end, but all I'm gonna do is peel and stick. Stick, stick. And now we're going on the side of this wood strip that we undermounted. So we undermounted this wood strip. Okay, remember it's important to have a marine snap on either side of the doorway because every time you walk through this doorway, you don't want to just peel this Velcro apart. So what I'm going to do here is a little trick. I'm just going to take some chalk and color the female side of the snap. And then I'll just make a little mark. magnetic doorway. You keep going right across here like this. And we're going to pull that on the other side. Okay, now we're going to put marine down, snaps down the side. Again, a good number is five. One at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle. Split the difference, split the difference. Now some folks ask, do I put the female on first or do I screw the male stud in first? It doesn't really matter. You can do it either way. So I'm going to show you both ways. So I want to put a snap right up here on the top. And I'm adjusting. So when you put the female on first, what I like to do is put that thing straight. And just give it a little hit with your hand. And that will make a little indentation. And in that indentation is where I put my nail snap. So I'm going to drill this in. And these are hard action snaps. So it takes a little bit of effort. Okay, now the male's in first. So what I do is I'll line this up. I'm going to take a piece of it's uh, sidewalk chalk. I'm just going to mark it up a little bit, put a little chalk on there. 
pull down with tension. Make a little mark. And that is the matching. I'm gonna clean the dust off this. Clean the chalk out. Snap. Nice and flat. Crunch, twist, crunch. Done. That whole side is done, nice and straight. Okay, before I seal this side, I wanna have my magnetic door connected. Why? Because if I pull too far on this thing, it's gonna separate my magnetic doorway and I'm gonna to have to start all over again. So let's get that thing so that this magnetic door closes without any, any pressure on it. And even have a little bit of a relaxed fit. And that's the line I'm gonna take. So what I have, I have five marine snaps. One at the, one at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle, split the difference split the difference, okay? If you put the snaps on with a little bit of tension vertically between the snaps, it lays nice and flat. So we've got the curtain in place. It's all snapped together. It goes all the way around. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our elastic cords. The elastic cords in the corner, depending on how we position them, we can take a little bit of slack out of the bottom. So here's an elastic cord setup the way it came in your kit. We have two D-rings, the screws for the D-rings. One of the clips is on the cord. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the cord to the desired length and you're gonna put this last clip on. It's just a clip and a collar, okay? So let's show you how to do that. So the best place for the elastic cord is right here in the gap. And there's my D-ring right here. It's pushing my corner right in the back. Second D-ring is just gonna go right back here in the corner below the first one. Right into the floor. Now, if you happen to be going into masonry, the curtain needs to go around something. So you're gonna to have to get it into masonry, concrete or something like that. And the only difference between drilling into masonry and drilling into wood is you need a masonry drill bit. And then you need a little plastic insert to receive the screw. Almost like you're hanging a, a mirror in drywall. You know, you put those little plastic anchors in there to hold the screw. Well, you put the same sort of plastic anchor in the concrete so that it doesn't chip away at the concrete. That's it. Now we're gonna hang our elastic cord. Before I do any cutting, I'm gonna hook it up. This cord stretches two to one, but you don't wanna pull it with maximum tension. I'm just gonna hook that thing up there. I want it taut, but I don't want it super taut. I think that would be good. So what I'm gonna do is I need some scissors. Trent, you wanna cut it right there? Good. And I need the collar. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this collar on first. And the other clip. This other clip. Make sure you get it all the way down to the hilt. Get it all the way in there. All the way in, pull down, locks on. Okay, now I stretch down to my other D-ring. And now my curtain has something to go around. 
and I have a nice crisp corner. When this thing gets snapped to the side, it'll have a nice crisp corner like that. Okay, before I seal the base, what I like to do is I like to give it a day or so and watch how the curtain is behaving. One thing I'm noticing is that my magnetic door uh, doesn't seem to want to close at the bottom or the wind blows it open. A couple things I can do is I can add another magnet at the bottom and give it a little more strength there. But what's really happening is remember I have a short panel and then I have a very long panel that goes all the way around. What's happening, I figure, is that the wind, as it's kind of putting pressure on the larger panel, it's shifting it. So if I can take a snap and I can put it right here on this corner, I can take a lot of pressure off that doorway and get that door to close properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this way and notice what happens here. When I pull, I get a nice seal and I'll just reach it over and snap it. And see that nice straight line, I got a nice seal there. So now the base of my curtain has a lot less pressure on it, and less likely to pry open. Now, if you find that your curtain's a little bit too wide, one little trick is to pinch an inch at a corner. Pinch an inch at a corner, you just took out two inches, an inch on this side, an inch on this side, and hit it with a marine snap, and hit it with a marine snap. You can do this on either the top or the bottom if you need to. And you barely notice the difference, right? It's just an option if your curtain happens to be a little bit too wide. We don't need it in this case. Okay, so let's do a recap of the project. We're snapped to that side. We have a short panel, a magnetic doorway. We turn the corner, we place the snap strategically at that bottom corner, that bottom corner, taking an outside hang Velcro attachment. And the larger panel wraps all the way around and snaps to the far end of the porch. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this white curtain down that has a Velcro attachment and an outside hang, and we're gonna put up a black curtain on tracking with an inside hang.